What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're gonna to be working on a 2004 Mark IV R32 Golf. Today on the Mark IV behind me, we're gonna be covering how to replace your front and rear suspension. This will be applicable to all R32s, Mark IV chassis, of course. The front end might be similar to your GTI, but the rear end's gonna be completely different. In front of us, we have a Kony Active Kit. Now this kit includes everything you need to do, both the front and rear, paired with some H&R lowering springs, which will give us about an inch and a quarter drop all around. We have struts, we have shocks, we have the bellows, the boots, hardware, spring purchase, bearings, you name it, everything needed to do this DIY. Typically, shocks and struts are gonna last you anywhere from 60 to 100,000 miles. It really depends on how you drive the car and the type of roads that your car sees. The example behind us has about 124,000 miles on its original suspension. It's completely blown out, so you can imagine it's not a very comfortable ride. The Kony Actives give you a ride between comfort and sport, so you're not sacrificing comfort to the full, but it's not also a harsh uh, shock and strut assembly giving you a race car feel the whole time. So it's a nice in-between, and paired with these H&R springs, it should be quite a nice ride. But before we get started on this DIY, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna need for this job. For this DIY, you're gonna need your basic socket set, torque wrenches and ratchets. We have everything from a half inch drive to a quarter inch drive. Some specialty sockets of note is gonna be a 17 millimeter hex, should you play along and do your axle bolts with us. A five millimeter hex to counter hold our Mylas sway bar end links. We have a T25, we have CTA 4005, that's gonna be our spreader tool to spread the back of the spindle to get the strut assemblies out. You'll see we use a couple of the same size sockets in different variations. We use a half inch drive and maybe a 3 8 drive for the 21. Same thing for our 16s and our 18s. The full list will be listed over to my side if you wanna pause the screen for a second and see every socket size specifically for this job. We'll be also be using an 18 millimeter wrench, a big hammer, and then some of the more important tools for this job is gonna be a spring compressor. We have a big McPherson spring compressor tool here. Now, note here, these can be really helpful, but they can also be really sketchy. So if you're not comfortable using one of these tools, the money that you're saving doing this DIY by yourself, take the parts to your Indy, take your old struts over to the shop and have them disassemble and assemble your new struts should you not be taking all the hardware that we listed in the intro before. Um, CTA pass-through socket set makes this job incredibly easy. Um, it also helps with some of the other hardware like soy bar end links, tie rods, depending on what you're working on. This is CTA 7466. Electric tools, again, goes without saying. Helpful. Penetrating fluid. We have some liquid moly ceramic paste. I use this on everything. And not pictured here, but needed is gonna be a screw jack if you're following along on a lift, or a floor jack and maybe a block of wood. Now we know what tools we're working with. Let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, we have our new Kony up here. Since we have all the hardware to assemble a new strut, we're not gonna be taking apart the old one. However, not to sound like one of those people, but the disassembly is gonna be the exact reverse of what we're about to do. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, the most important thing here is the spring compressor that you're gonna be using. This is a super critical part. If you're not comfortable using this tool or you do not have a proper tool, just skip this step. Take the parts to your local Indy, have them disassemble your old strut if you're not buying all the hardware and assemble the new ones for you. The money you're saving doing this DIY by yourself, you can spend the 50 bucks to have them assemble them for you, and you can just pop them in the car. But for us, we have the tools. We're gonna to talk you through the process of assembling our new strut. A couple of things to note, we have our H&R springs. You wanna install these with the lettering being upright so that it's not looking like this when it's in the car. You want them to be upright like this. At the end of the spring coil, there is a flat stop. That stop matches up with a stop on the bottom perch here on our strut assembly. So just keep that in mind. That's gonna be critical once we go and remove the spring compressor and let everything get tight. We also have a new bump stop and bellow. Bellows can often be reused depending on the condition of your car, but the bump stops tend to degrade over time. And if your suspension is completely worn out, these are usually crumbled or non-existent. So we're gonna start with the bellow and the bump stop first. And we're just gonna simply feed that over the top of our shaft. And we just want it to be somewhat flush with the top here on the flat spot of our shaft. Then we're gonna slide the bellow over. Just sits on top like so. 
Same thing, we're just gonna bring it so that the bellow is flush with the top of our shaft there. Now we're gonna work on the spring. So what I like to do is feed the spring over and have it roughly lined up at the bottom of the perch. You'll notice the top of the spring is also a lot smaller, meaning that there's only room for this plate to situate itself on. It would not fit the other way around, even if you accidentally mistaken them. Then comes our metal washer or our top spring seat. That sits something like that. Then at this point we would install our bearing, our top mount, and then we have our locking nut. Now because we're installing lowering springs, we don't necessarily need to compress the spring down, but we're still gonna show you what this is gonna look like should you be disassembling your old units first. So at this point we have, just to recover, we have strut body, we have spring, we have our bellow and bump stop, we have our plate, our top perch plate, we have our bearing, we have our upper strut mount, and we have our locking nut. Just to give you a quick view of what this would look like coming apart, let's say this is our old strut. We would be setting our spring compressor into place. So right now, that would look something like so. We would take our ratchet, our wrench, or our impact. If it's your own tool, go ahead and use an impact tool. If you're renting it or borrowing it, you can damage it using an impact gun. So be respectful to the tool. And we're just gonna snug up the spring. And the goal here is to have these parts be loose so that the whole spring assembly can move and we can remove the top strut mount and plate and bearing without ejecting them into the next zip code. So that's what this is gonna look like when it's coming apart. You would take off your top parts here, set these to the side. And if you're using some of the old hardware, you're looking for this plate right here on your old strut assembly. And you can also use the 21 millimeter locking nut. Everything else you're gonna to wanna to replace. The bearing wears out over time. These get squished over time as well. And while you're at it, you might as well replace the top hat mount. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and put this back together. Then we'll start tightening them down and then we'll get ready to install them on the car. We're just snugging up the 21 millimeter nut. We're not trying to spin the shaft or anything. Once we have it a little bit situated, let me go ahead and get rid of the spring compressor tool now, making sure that my spring is lined up properly at the bottom of the perch here. And we can get rid of this tool. And now we're gonna use our pass-through socket set. We have a six millimeter hex to kind of hold the shaft from spinning. And we're using our 21 millimeter socket to tighten it. The torque spec for this locking nut is 60 Newton meters. We're just gonna go ahead and make it nice and tight. That should be more than plenty. Make sure that your hex or counter hold tool that you're using is situated all the way in. The last thing you wanna do is strip it. And now with that, my good people, we have a strut assembly ready to rock and roll. So let's head over to the car and work on installing it. All right, my good people, we're at the back of the R32. We're gonna start by removing our wheel first, five 17 millimeter lug bolts. If you have the beauty caps over your car, go ahead and pop those out using the Volkswagen tool or a small pick. If you don't have an impact gun to break the lug bolts free, you're gonna to wanna to use a breaker bar with the car on the ground still. Just break them about half a turn, then you can jack the vehicle up and remove them the rest of the way. We have a Milwaukee, so we're just gonna go ahead and blast them off. All right, now we have our wheel off. The next step is gonna be to remove our fender liner so we have access to the shock hardware. So let's go ahead and do that now. We have 10 T25s to remove. We have three up against the inner wheel well. And then we have another seven along the arch. With all our T25s out of the way, we're gonna pull our fender liner off. If you're working on the ground, just be mindful. There's a lot of dirt and debris that's gonna be in here. You don't want it to fall on your face. Wear some safety goggles or a shield if you need to. So 
is the most stubborn fender liner I think I've ever dealt with. We'll go ahead and set this dusty Johnson to the side. Right now that we have our fender liner off, we have a great view of the upper shock hardware. We also have a good view of the inside of our rockers here. This would be a great time to go ahead and clean any dirt and debris that's in here as these are notorious for rotting, especially up front. But we'll go ahead and get a brutal brush and clean that out. But for now, we're going to go ahead and brace the bottom of the trailing arm here and we're going to work on removing our rear shock. So let's do that now. Underneath the car, my good people, we have our rear trailing arm supported with a screw jack. For those of you playing along at home, use a floor jack to support this. We're going to remove this lower bolt. This also holds the sway bar end link and the shock to the carrier back here. It's a 21 millimeter bolt. We're going to break it free first with a 21 millimeter socket on a half inch ratchet just to give us some good bite here. We have a new one of these included in the kit, so we'll go ahead and replace it. They're not torqued to yield. You can use them maybe once more again if you'd like to, but something about fresh hardware with fresh suspension looks really good. All right, now with that, that leaves the bottom of our shock body loose. We can go ahead and gently lower the trailing arm, remove your floor jack or your screw jack. We'll just set this to the side. Now we're gonna get a little bit more eye level and work on the top shock bolt. So let's do that now. Up top, we have a 16 millimeter bolt to remove. We're just gonna use our ratchet to break it free. This one shouldn't be as tight as the bottom one. And we'll just zap it out the rest of the way and be prepared for the shock to wanna to drop. You wanna brace it and grab it as it comes down. And there we go, my good people. Here's our old shock body. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on removing our spring. Depending on what your car is equipped with, you can see this car has lowering springs. Sometimes with that, you may be able to just push down on the trailing arm, get a pry bar and get that spring out. We could probably do that. Um, but we're also gonna show you how to use a spring compressor to get it out, should you still have factory springs. So let me grab the spring compressor and we'll get you set up over here for that. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our spring compressor. Again, you could probably work this trailing arm down a bit if you have lowering springs already that you're replacing or upgrading, but for our case, we'll just go ahead and show you what this could look like. All right, using a pry bar, arguably you could use an even bigger one than this. This one's a 25 inch. We're gonna pry from the subframe on top of our upper control arm. Here's a better view of where we're prying from, right above the axle and laying the pry bar right above the control arm. And the goal here is to lower this trailing arm enough to be able to pull the spring out. Now that it's a bit compressed. Bigger pry bar is definitely the move or a second set of hands. So just to give you an idea of what Nate just helped us do, there's a stud on the top and the bottom that these springs sit on. These keeps them aligned. While the bottom's still hooked in, and I use it, the large pry bar and my body to push them on the arm, Nate went in with the other pry bar from the top and just worked it out until it came out at an angle. And now we can rock and roll. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and clean up these perches. We have some of them to replace. Then we can work on installing our new spring and new perches. Now we're going to work on installing our new upper spring perch as our old one was completely degraded. Our bottom one's perfectly fine. We just cleaned off all the old uh, chipped off paint from our old springs and any debris that was on them. We have our new spring and our spring compressor ready to rock and roll. Again, the lettering facing upright. We're going to work on prying the arm down and getting it situated on the bottom first, and then we'll push it over to the front. Um, again, it might be helpful to have a second person help you with this, uh, but let's go ahead and get to it. And with that, we have our new spring in. We're just going to remove the spring compressor. And then it's dealer choice if you want to clock it so you can see the H&R lettering on it. All right, now we have that installed. Let's go ahead and install our new shock. We're gonna start with the 16 millimeter bolt up top. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and feed our new Kony Active Shock in. Start at the top, line up that bolt hole. We're gonna get our 16 millimeter bolt fed through. You want to get started on the other side. We're not gonna tighten it down just yet. We're just gonna snug it up. Then once we get the bottom bolted on, then we can go ahead and torque both of them down. All right, now we'll get our screw jack situated and we'll work on getting our bolt through the bottom. Then we'll snug that one up. Then we'll come back up and torque up our 16. Now right, we're gonna go ahead and get our shock body over. So you can see the bottom trailing arm or the carry here is way lower than the shock. So we're just gonna use our screw jack and our floor jack for those of you playing along. We're gonna raise this up until it's nice and even and we can get the carrier, the shock, and the sway bar end links aligned. That looks kind of close. We're gonna get our bolt fed through. And again, the goal here is to always start your hardware by hand. The last thing you wanna do is strip the threads on the carrier. Three-eighths drive ratchet and my 21 millimeter socket to get this started while I kind of make these three things level so that our hardware can get started. We're gonna go ahead and torque this lower bolt down to 110 Newton meters. There we go. And we'll go ahead and hit it with a little paint mark just so that we know we've torqued it down. All right, my good people, now with that, let's head back up top and tighten down that 16 millimeter bolt. We're gonna tighten down our 16 millimeter bolt to 60 Newton meters. There we go. And we'll hit it with a good little paint mark. And now that that's all buttoned up, my good people, all we have left to do is to reinstall our fender liner. So let's go ahead and get ready for that. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our fender liner. It's a great time to give these a wipe down, get all the dust out of them. We've also cleaned up the inside of our wheel well, gotten any debris out of there. Keep this baby rust free for as long as we can. With our fender liner in, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our 10 T25s. So let's get to it. All right, now with that, we can go ahead and reinstall our wheel. I already went ahead and wire wheel this hub off camera. As you remember, the, or may have seen, the wheel was stuck on there just from corrosion. Um, Aaron, who owns the car, is super against uh, coating his hubs. He's a barbarian, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it for him. So the next time he works on this car, his wheel's not stuck. A little bit of uh, liquid molly ceramic paste. We'll keep that from happening in the future. I also went ahead and cleaned the inside of the barrel of the wheel. You know, it's not every day that you have your wheels off. The uh, Aristos on here are a little bit hard to clean when it comes to the barrel. So take the time, give it a nice wipe, clean the inside of the hub on the wheel as well. If that has any corrosion on it, then this is null. And now we can go ahead and grab our wheel and our 17 millimeter sockets and just get that started. And we're just gonna gently snug them up in a crisscross pattern so that the wheel is flush to the hub. But for now, let's hop up front and take care of the front struts. All right, my good people, we're at the front of the R32. We're gonna be working on the driver's side to do the front strut. The steps are gonna be the same for the driver and passenger side. The only difference being that you have a brake pad wear sensor on the driver's side. To get started, we're gonna work our way from the top down, excluding the top strut mount. So we're gonna start at the sway bar end link and our ABS wiring. For this DIY today, we're gonna to be undoing the lower ball joint to help us pull this old uh, strut assembly out. Um, the alternative would be to remove the whole thing and you can pull the whole spindle off, which is another option. Um, to be totally honest, we're two steps away from doing that at this point anyways, but if you don't wanna remove everything, you don't have to. So first, let's start up top with our some harness and some sway bar end links. First, we're just gonna undo these two lines here. These just pop out. They're just two little metal tabs that hold the ABS or speed sensor cable in place. And there's one more tab right here that also holds it in place up against our strut body. 
same deal, just pull it out. And if you do end up pulling the whole assembly, don't forget to unplug the sensor. There's just an electrical connector down below. Up here, we have an 18 millimeter bolt. Uh, this car is equipped with Myla HD soy bar end links. Your hardware may change depending on what your vehicle is equipped with. Should your car have the Myla, you're gonna use an 18 to undo the nut. And if you need to, you can counter hold with a five millimeter hex. We're gonna try our luck at just zapping the nut off first. Of course. So this one's not gonna come free just like that. So we will be taking a counter hold tool to it. So let's go ahead and get set up for that. So what we're gonna use since we have the set already for our strut is our pass through socket set. It's an 18 millimeter. And we're gonna get our five millimeter hex fed into place. I'm gonna do instead, since this is a tiny hex bit, I'm gonna get this one situated first. The last thing I wanna do is strip that. And then we will be having a much harder time. All right, that's nice and snug. We can get our 18 through. You can also substitute this pass-through socket set in this instance with a wrench. And we're just gonna let our ratchet for the counter hold tool butt up against the And if you can now, go ahead and work the sway bar end link out. But because it's under tension for us at the moment, uh, we're not gonna be able to pull it out just yet, but we'll come back to it in just a little bit. Moving down, we have this bracket right here that's held in by a 10 millimeter bolt. It's just like a pinch bolt. We're gonna go ahead and undo it. And that's gonna separate this bracket for us right here. All right, and then we can pull this bracket off. One half of it will come off and then this other one can just hang out for now. Now, before we undo our pinch bolt, we're gonna go ahead and hop to the other side of the strut where we have a smaller metal tab that is bolted to our strut bar. It's held in by a T25. We're gonna go ahead and take that one out now. We're gonna go ahead and zap this out. This holds the harness going to our brake pad wear sensor. Now, someone did a real bad, bad uh, booboo on this car and cut off the other end of our sensor, but we'll go ahead and replace it while we have this apart. But for now, this tab will just pull off. I might need to uh, encourage it off. Just got a little bit of corrosion holding it on. And then we're gonna pretend that it's still connected. We can either choose to disconnect the sensor here, which this one has a broken tab already. So it's not doing anything, it's just been bypassed. But typically you have a small tab here, standard VAG connector. And then the sensor itself would be going to our caliper, which we will replace and unhack the hackiness here. And now we'll just swing that out of the way. Next on our list of things to do is we're gonna go ahead and undo our axle nut. That'll allow us to swing this uh, spindle assembly out a bit when we undo our ball joint nuts, and it'll keep us from putting too much stress or awkward stress on our CB joint or our boot. So 17 millimeter hex, and we're just gonna go ahead and zap that out. I'm gonna use a screwdriver to wedge in between one of the brake disc veins and our brake copper carrier to kind of hold everything in place from spinning, meaning I don't want the disc to spin while we try to free this up. And I'm also gonna thread a lug bolt back in to keep the hub assembly in the back from spinning on us while we're trying to undo this large bolt. Impact is gonna be the way to go. Makes life a lot easier. Make sure that's nice and situated all the way. Then we can go ahead and zap this out. Now what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna thread the bolt back in about 80% and just hit it with the hammer to break the seal and make sure that the axle will have a little bit of play. That's perfect, that's exactly what we wanna see. So now that our axle is free for the time being, we're gonna go ahead and work on undoing our pinch bolt and just breaking the seal between the strut body and the spindle, so let's get ready for that. Now we're gonna take uh, 18 impact on our Milwaukee. This will be on the nut side and an 18 wrench on the head of the bolt to counter hold. And we'll go ahead and zap this pinch bolt out. 
Another 18 on the head of our nut, 18 on the head of our bolt. Go ahead and blast that out. And I can already tell you that this pinch bolt is incredibly seized in here because the head of the bolt did not spin once. So we're gonna take our 18 millimeter socket on the impact and just blast this bolt free. Take a hammer to it only because we are replacing this bolt. These are one-time use, torque to yield. Just pushing through on the other side with a flathead screwdriver and we can work this crusty disaster out. Now with that, let's head underneath and undo our... Actually, no. Now with that, let's go ahead and install our spreader tool so we can work on breaking the seal between the strut body and the spindle. We want our spreader tool, which is an oval shape, to land on the widest sides, left and right, so that it splits the spindle as best as possible, giving us a better chance to get the strut assembly out. Sometimes getting this tool situated can be a little bit tricky. You just gotta work at it a little bit. All right, that is exactly what we are looking for. That's gonna give us a little bit of play between our strut assembly and the carrier, which is already coming down. And with that, our strut assembly is free. Now let's head up top and work on undoing our strut mount. Up top, we're gonna work on disconnecting our covers. If you still have the beauty covers over the lock nuts, we have a 21 millimeter bolt that uses a seven millimeter counter hold. Now we're gonna try to just zap the bolt out since we are replacing the strut assemblies. We don't really care about any of these old components. Should you just be taking this apart for another job and you are re not replacing the strut, then don't use an impact, just use a counter hold with a 21. So we're gonna try first, zap it, and if that doesn't work, then we'll do it the proper way. 21 on the impact and we got lucky. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and then we'll just reach out from under, or we'll reach underneath and pull the old strut assembly out. All right, initial look, you can take a look. Our bellow is completely destroyed. Uh, surprisingly though, the bump stop's okay. It's got some stress cracks in it, but yeah, it's not okay. It's pretty broken. This top strut mount is completely squished. When the car was on the ground, there was about a quarter inch of gap between the uh, body of the car and the top hat, so definitely due for replacement. We're gonna go ahead and set this to the side, grab our new strut assembly, and feed it in. Before you install your new strut assembly, make sure you clean the spindle up. If it's rusty in there, get the rust out. We're just gonna wipe ours out, ours is in good shape, and we're gonna hit it with some liquid moly ceramic paste, so that next time someone does this job, it's even easier for them. Now we can grab our new strut assembly and feed it up. Now we're going to go ahead and feed our new strut assembly in. This is going to be a shorter body, so it should be easier to work with. Um, we may even be able to feed it into the spindle and then clock it into the tower, but we'll see as we go in. So let's go ahead and feed this now. We'll be feeding our strut assembly just into the strut tower. Then we're going to come up top, get the top portion of our top hat here, line that up and get this new 22 millimeter nut started. We're gonna set up our counter hold, which is gonna be a six millimeter hex. Torque spec for this locking nut is also 60 Newton meters. These are gonna be a little bit tricky to torque down. Um, you can use something like an oxygen sensor, like a Lombada wrench, which has the 3 8 drive on the side. For today, we're just gonna go ahead and snug these down nicely. 60 Newton meters is not a whole lot. So it will be more than okay, my good people. All right, we'll take our tools out. We reinstall our dust cap. In this case, we have a nice new one. Now let's head underneath and button everything else back down below. Now we're gonna start by attaching our strut assembly to our spindle. And while we have it accessible, we'll feed in our sway bar end link as well. Uh, it's at a good height right now. Sway bar end link just literally slides right on. Then we can swing our spindle assembly over 
push down on it a little bit. The spreader tool is still in, of course. Now we're gonna grab our screw jack. I'm gonna use that to lift up the whole assembly here so we can feed our pinch bolt through and torque that down nicely. If you're doing this at home on the ground, just use a floor jack underneath the control arm and lift everything up. With our spreader tool still on and our screw jack underneath our control arm, we're gonna raise this up until our strut sits in all the way. Feel free to rotate the strut back and forth a bit if you need to. Make sure that the back tab is going in. In this case, I have it off just a hair, so I'm gonna back it up, rotate my strut assembly, and make sure it's going in properly. Now we're gonna grab our new pinch bolt and feed it through. I'm gonna add a little bit of paste to the shoulder here on the bolt so that hopefully next time someone does this job, it's a lot easier for them. I'm not doing it on the threads, just the shoulder. Liquid Molly for the win, baby. I'm just gonna use an 18 millimeter wrench to counter hold. And our pack. Just to snug it up. Now let me grab my torque wrench and we'll go ahead and torque that down. Now we're gonna torque this pinch bolt down to 60 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. So we'll do the 60 first. I'm gonna check the head to see if it's spinning, which it is. So we will counter hold. So there's 60. And we'll mark the bolt, and then we're gonna do another quarter turn. There we go. Now we'll go ahead and mark that. And now with that, we can move on to removing our screw jack and buttoning up the rest of our stuff. And now we're gonna work backwards, my good people. We have our metal tab right over here. Situate this bad boy. Then we have our T25 to feed in. Then we can swing our bracket assembly back on with our 10 millimeter pinch bolt. Next, we can work on tucking in our ABS wiring right down here while I have you by the bracket. And then before we tuck the two tabs up top, let's go ahead and tackle this sway bar end link. This sway bar end link 18 millimeter nut gets torqued down to 50 Newton meters plus an additional 90 degrees. We're just gonna snug it up using the impact and then we'll torque it down properly. All right, so at this point it's starting to spin on us, so we'll do our counter hole trick to get that snugged up the rest of the way. We have our five millimeter counter hold hex, and we have our 18 millimeter. All right, that's nice and snug. Let's go ahead and get our counter hold tool off. And then we'll check the tightness with our torque wrench. We'll set it to 50 Newton meters. There we go. And we'll mark it just to show that it's been torqued up. And now we can reattach our ABS cable to the two tabs here. Let's just squeeze in. And now all we have left to do up here before we can throw our wheel back on is reinstall our axle nut. So let's do that now. All right, my good people, now comes the part of installing our new axle bolt. We're gonna go ahead and get this started by hand first. We're gonna do what we did at the beginning, which is we're gonna lock the rotor in between our caliper and our carrier. And we're gonna feed in one lug bolt. Now I'm just gonna use the impact to snug up the axle bolt. We're not gonna torque it down like that. We're just snugging it up using our 17 millimeter hex. I'm just gonna back it up a pinch so we can torque it down properly. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna go ahead and torque this to 250 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. Then we're gonna break it loose for half a turn, rotate our whole assembly here 180 degrees, and then finalize it with another 250 plus 90. So it's quite a bit. 
make sure you have all the anger that you just stored by doing this DIY in your arms. So you can go ahead and torque this properly. Uh, to help me out, I'm gonna lift the car up so I can use my light frame to uh, pull down these torques. We have our torque wrench set to 250. We're gonna do the initial torque. There's 250. And we're gonna make our mark on our bolt for our quarter turn. We're gonna switch over to a normal ratchet so we don't destroy our torque wrench here. All right, there's our 90. Now we're gonna break the bolt half a turn. So we're gonna use, oops, let me mark that again. We're gonna use our existing mark here. And we're gonna loosen it half a turn. Now we're gonna rotate our pop assembly 180 degrees. Now we're gonna torque this, again, 250 Newton meters plus an additional 90 degrees, and that's gonna finalize the torque settings on this 17 millimeter hex bolt. There's our 250. And we'll make ourselves a fresh mark. This is necessary so we can seat the hub down and the bearing properly. Now we'll do the final 90 degree turn and we will be set to rock and roll. All right, with our final 90, we're just gonna throw a little bit of a paint marker on here to show that it's nice and torqued down. And now with that, we can set this to a eye level, put our wheel back on and wrap up this DIY baby. Now we can feed our wheel back on. Now we're just gonna go ahead and snug up the wheel to the hub, gently using the impact. All right, let's get this bad boy on the ground and we'll torque up our lug bolts. With the car back on the ground, we can torque down all four wheels. Again, 17 millimeter lug bolts, 90 foot pounds or 120 Newton meters. Make sure you snug them up in a crisscross pattern. And that, my good people, is gonna conclude this DIY on this R32. A little bit of a pain in the butt, especially if you're doing it for the first time or you're dealing with rusty hardware. Um, but overall, a garage friendly job. You definitely don't need a lift for this DIY and I would almost argue it's easier on the ground. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave those in the comments section below. And if you like this DIY and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.